Chef Jason Parsons is joining us now to make a delicious summer dessert, and it involves strawberries, which I love. Don't you just love them, Jason? Uh, you know, strawberry, when it becomes strawberry season, they're the most amazing thing. They're so bright in flavor, and, you know, there's so many things you can do with them. In fact, I love actually putting balsamic vinegar and basil on mine. That makes it amazing. But uh, today we're doing strawberry crumb bars. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this sounds incredible. Fresh Ontario strawberries. Here are all the ingredients uh, for this recipe. And chef, where do we begin? Well, you know, it's all about the, the kind of a crumbly texture. So what you do is you start off with um, just a ton of flour. And you're just gonna put that in there like that. Um, but lots of butter, of course, right? But the key is the butter has to be cold. Okay, if you throw soft butter in here, you won't get that flaky texture. So you're gonna put it in, and what I do is I dice it up quite small, you can see here, and then I pop it back in the fridge and let it get really kind of firm. Uh, of course, just turn away, a lot of sugar. Oh no, a little bit of sugar in there. Um, a little bit of baking powder to give us that lightness. And then of course, a little bit of salt, just cause salt always brings the flavor out and everything. Everybody forgets to put that little bit of salt in things. But this is where you have to get your hands in there and you just start to kind of rub it together. Um, there are those little knives that you can get that kind of cut uh, butter into dough and you can use that if you want But I like to get my hands in there and just all I'm doing is gently squeezing the butter Making a crumble the idea is that you're breaking these little parcels of butter into it But they're not completely broken down if I poured liquid butter in here mm -hmm. It'd be evenly spread which would be fine But with the actual little crumbs of butter it creates pockets and helps your uh, your pastry to be a little bit more crispy So so anyway, that's that's kind of good enough for now, but you're gonna get you know get the idea. You take it down to a nice crumb. But here's the thing that we're gonna add flavor to this is we're actually gonna take some eggs, and we're gonna add a little bit of vanilla to it. And this is what you can add any flavor. Well, you know, I never thought about it, but you can actually add a bit of balsamic vinegar to this. Would be kind of cool. Uh, but it's your just your flavoring. There, and all you're you gonna do, do is just. <laughs> oh, I know it'd be great. A little, little basil, a little balsamic. Uh, but you just lightly whip them up a little bit, fluff them up. You know, we're not looking for whipped eggs, we're just kind of breaking them down a little bit. And then we're literally just going to pour that mixture right in there. You know, nice and simple. Okay. And then again, we get our hands in there and we start mixing it up. Um, you know, what I always say is go to the dry stuff and kind of push in and then your hands don't get as messy. They will get messy a bit. But. <laughs> and you just kind of toss it around, even it. But the idea is you end up with this nice, fluffy, dry mixture that's really going to give you the texture of the crumb that you want, right? So once that's done, you're going to line this on a tray. Now, for the ease of the show and for something at home, I'm actually just using a little um, casserole dish because it's smaller, but I've lined it with parchment paper, okay? And I'm just going to put a little bit here so it doesn't, the wind doesn't blow away. But you can actually do them on the large baking trays as well, which is what I did at home, or, and you know, it just gives you a lot more portions, right? But anything you do, line it with that parchment just because it gives you um, so much easier to get it out of the container, right? Yeah. So, you know, but then you're just going to pack it. And the idea is, because this isn't enough recipe for the bigger one, I don't need all of it, but you want a nice, healthy layer on the bottom because that's going to be your base for your crumb bars. Okay? Well, especially so also, we'll start with that. I know everybody's different. Some people want more fruit than crumble. I want more crumble than fruit or maybe yeah. equal half-half. So you have oh. to see how much yeah. the thickness of what you're laying down there. I, you know, I'm trying to think about it now. I think I'm probably a half and half because yeah. I love the fruit, but I don't want it to, I don't want to just eat a bowl of jam, you know, right. I want some that, I want texture in there. So, exactly. you know, fresh strawberries, fresh, fresh, fresh. If you can get them from the field, don't even put them in your fridge. That's the best, you know, go to the market. Um, if you're going to make this and you get everything prepped the day before, then don't get the strawberries, nip out in the morning, get them because the freshest, the better they are, you know? Yeah. And then of course, again, we always got a bit of sugar. Now the sugar, you can back off a little bit. If the strawberries are more ripe and you find them sweet, just back off the sugar a little bit. Or if they're in out of season, they're not that great, add more sugar to it. If you wanna change up some of the sugar and a little bit of honey, you can do that. The sugar is purely there for flavor, okay? But then we add cornstarch. And why do you throw cornstarch in what there we're gonna do as well? Here, it's a good question because here's the thing. If I just took these strawberries and I mixed them with sugar and I poured them over top of my crumble, they're gonna cook, but they're gonna go all liquidy, okay? And then you get those runny bars that we don't want. The cornstarch actually makes a little bit of a jam around it. It thickens it. It's almost like, you know when you add cornstarch to your turkey gravy? Yeah. You know, same kind of thing. It's gonna help thicken that jam so that when we put it on top, it'll actually stay in the bar. 
So nice. now you just literally sprinkle that right over top, you know, and that's where you can say more strawberries or less strawberries, you know, but yeah. don't get carried away. We want a, a, a bar here. We don't want this thing to be this high, right? Um, but once you've done that, then you're literally just going again with your crumble on top. And just at this time though, I don't want to pack it down too much. I want to kind of sprinkle it on because I want it to have that kind of texture where it's not too dense, but more brittly and soft and fluffy. Oh, that looks but you good. just simply pour it right over top. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah, so easy, so simple. You know, and you could add a bit of cinnamon in here if you want. You can add whatever you want. But literally, you just take that, pop it in the oven, and bake it, and uh, just let it cook away. It's, oh, it's so good. Uh, 350 degrees. Mm -hmm. You want to cook it for about 35 to 45 minutes. But you do want to chill it really well. And then you end up with, well, you can see this beautiful bar that we got oh here. Gosh. Look at that. It's so huge. simple. It's huge. Yeah. And then you. Well, I use the big tray, right? So, but there's where that lining comes in because you can literally just cut around the edges, slide it out onto a board. But the idea is you end up with these beautiful little strawberry uh, crumb bars that are just, you can make them bigger, smaller, whatever you want. Great little snacks and treats for the summer. Oh, Aren't they're they so good. They're fantastic and fresh and you didn't even use a mixer. Like it was all done with your hands, which is incredible. Thank you, chef. With the hands. Yeah, but then the people at home know that if you don't have all the fancy tools you're fine right so very nice chef you can find this scrumptious strawberry That's recipe it. up on cityline.tv